where in the meantime, it's still a magic phase, and the Screaming Skull Catapult gets shot out, and man, just murders this unit in front of the archers. That's really going to slow them down in terms of, uh, of of cracking their way through units. Managed to kill tons of skinks, and this is in combination with my shooting phase as well. Really just murdering this unit and uh, killing a croc score, so really happy with the Skullapult uh, so far. And the next picture, you can actually see the, uh, the miraculous... Uh, skeleton chariots breaking the unit of, of Saurus warriors, even though they only killed three of them, that was enough to, to do it. And uh, broken by fear, just running past the slum, luckily, so that I don't get a flank charge there. And it's away, so looking really good there. Um, managed to, to, to charge that unit down, but unfortunately didn't catch them, even though I rolled three dice and he rolled two. That means he's going to rally, and I'm going to have to fight the combat again. And chances are, I may not have as good, uh, good a, a round of dice rolling as I did against uh, against them in the first round because I got a lot of impact hits, and a lot of them inflicted the wounds, and he failed a lot of armor saves there, uh, just for me to get the three kills that I did and and break him. And I actually took two wounds in return, even though I was charging with a group of chariots. So those guys are hard as nails. Next photo, so the inevitable happens, the, the dino, dinosaur in the foreground charges the scorpion, will overrun past the, the skeleton Morris, and uh, in the background, uh, he's charging the, the bait archers with the, the triceratops dude, Stegodon, and the uh, remaining croxagor and, uh, and character there, he's actually lost all of the skinks from that unit, uh, amazingly, just due to a miraculous uh, Tomb King's uh, missile fire. Next picture, uh, funnily enough, he decides not to charge, he actually leaves the unit with his character uh, charging the archers and moves his croc score around. There's the only surviving thing in that unit, it's not even unit strength 5, so uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> but he's just going to just move out into the center of the battlefield and, and hope for the best. And in the background, the Saurus Warriors, to my uh, annoyance of, of a rally, but they were expected to, given, given the... Uh, uh, Lizardman general rule of rolling three dice and picking the best two when making uh, any kind of leadership test. Next photo, uh, what happens here is that predictably the ten skeleton archers are wiped out. The uh, character overruns into them and the uh, the steg uh, overruns onto the hill in front of the, the where my my general's just polished off his, his character predictably with the Destroyer of Eternities. And in the left hand side, the Stegodon has destroyed the uh, Tomb Scorpion. So I think uh, we're looking pretty good there for the for the Lizardman uh, and uh, I am going to have to try and win the game back somehow because the left-hand flank has crumbled now and I'm looking at a, a really uh, nasty-looking center. Next photo, on the far right, the uh, again, the chariots have charged his, uh, his Saurus warriors just trying to finish them off, and on the far right-hand side, the, the princess unit, having actually lost a, a chariot due to, to something or other, I think it might have been a spell or a lot of javelins or something, um, the Karen's still there march-blocking, but, but the Tomb Prince is just trying to move around and move around until he can... Uh, get a magic move into the flank because if he charges the front he's got a fully ranked unit with two croc scores and he's got a standard and he's got a character with six attack strength four weapon score five so I'm not going to win that combat and break him automatically so I don't really want to charge in the front next picture uh, what have we got here um, the tomb king has now flown down and joined the tomb guard which has moved forward so I'm planning on getting a charge in that croc score and then overrunning into the slans unit because I actually think I can beat the slans unit he's got no Kraman group in there and the slans not very good in combat so the king with the destroyer of eternity should be able to take that out. So that's the plan for the next th next stage of the game. Next photo. Oh man, um, the chariots charging into the Saurus warriors uh, chopped down three of them, but attacking back they wiped it out. So three Saurus warriors really annoyingly are left there, and I've lost the chariots. So uh, not too much I could have done about that. But man, those guys are hard as nails. You don't want to get stuck in a prolonged combat again, or any kind of combat to be honest, unless the, the odds are stacked in your favour. Uh, because they are really good troops. Next picture. Um, <laughs> oh man. Uh, so what you've got here is that the uh, Stegodon has been charged by my um, skeleton warriors into its flank, and they actually miraculously took out a couple of skink crewmen by uh, making them fail their armor saves. They're massive, three plus or two plus, whatever it is, and uh, and then they've got charged in the in the rear end by the other Stegodon. Thanks to the Wolf Hunts spell, which the Slan has, which he used in his magic phase. So that unit of skeletons is going down uh, with a big dinosaur just romp, rampaging through them in the rear. D6 plus one impact hits and so forth. And in the center, his character against the uh, the archers is, uh, is pretty much just plodding along. He actually failed his break test one point from not doing enough damage. So that was insane. And in fact, the skeletons just pulled their swords out and actually wounded him once. And he's only got two wounds. So this is looking like a really interesting combat. And still the uh, Casket of Souls... 
and the Scalapult is uh, plugging away, but note the Croxco in the center has moved out of the way uh, of the um, of the Tomb Guard, so I won't actually be charging him and then overrunning into the Slans unit. Next picture though, oh ho, Tomb King's a unit charges the Slan bunker, he holds, and then I cut down like four Soros Warriors, and he breaks automatically, outnumbered by fear, and this is just a photo for effect. He rolled an eight to flee, I rolled an eight to pursue, he's wiped out, so that's the entire Slan level four pulled up with abilities and items and a whole massive unit of Soros Warriors down the drain, so this suddenly pulls me back into the game in terms of points. I've lost a lot of other stuff, and I'm about to lose all of the massive points sync that I've got on the hill. But taking that out really gave me hope because things are now very even. So hopefully you guys are on the edges of your seat because now we've got a game in our hands. Tomb King uh, getting rid of the Slan. Kermit the Frog is down. Next photo and uh, all carnage breaks loose on the hill. Stegodon's charging left and right into the Skeleton Arches, into the Casket of Souls. And uh, you can predict the results. There's nothing here to defend the Rampaging Dinosaurs. So I've pretty much lost everything on the hill. Uh, but uh, good photo nonetheless. Next next picture, um, the, the Chameleon Skinks have managed to walk all the way back across the battlefield and have, have now left the uh, forest sniping the Tomb Guard, but not too much uh, that they can do about the Tomb Guard unit because they're, A, they're tough, and B, they've got a good armor save, and C, they resurrect themselves automatically due to their banner. So uh, they're looking pretty, uh, pretty solid right there. Next picture... <laughs> This is really annoying. I took great pains to make sure that the Hierophant wasn't in the overrun uh, charge range for the Stegodon, but you know my opponent insisted on charging through their gap and having the crew aligned to the Stegodon, uh, even though I couldn't actually physically move the models from the casket. And uh, he rolled a high enough uh, number of, of dice to actually overrun past the casket after, after he destroyed it and uh, hit the Hierophant as well. So losing the Hierophant's gonna hurt. We're up to about turn five by now, so it's not gonna hurt too badly, but obviously the Crumbling Hierophant will actually get rid of the Scalapult as well. Not that it was gonna last long on the hill anyway. Next picture, uh, we're getting near to the end of the game. He's destroyed everything on the hill. The Hierophant is down, I'm taking tests, uh, and he's just capturing table two quarters with his dinosaurs at the moment. Um, these, the three remaining Saurus Warriors in the background got charged by the chariots. They fled, they ran, they fled into the Tomb Guard, so they were automatically destroyed, and he's placed his uh, frog slan behind the tomb guard just to represent the fact that I've captured the battle standard. So, on to the f second to last photo of the battle report. Uh, he's actually, he fled his, um, his, his unit of skinks because I miraculously had a, a massive damage Skullipole hit again on them, wiping out most of the unit and killing one of the croc scores. This is before the, uh, the Skullipole crumbled, by the way. And uh, he fled due to the panic test, now he's rallied on the hill. So it's now going to be a matter of whether I can charge into him and beat him with just the Prince's Chariots. And I think the prospect of that is looking much more likely given the fact that he is really depleted in numbers and he's lost to Croxagore. So final photo of the game, the King moves over, Magic moves into them. I got Smiting off in the Chariots. The Chariots assassinated the champion of the unit in the Magic phase with Smiting. So I was able to challenge his character there with my, my Tomb King and uh, managed to roll like a double one on the Destroyer of Eternity somehow. Uh, so the Tomb King actually um, didn't actually kill him, kill the character, but the, the Chariots just murdered the rest of the unit and uh, he failed his break test. He, he would have needed double ones on three dices, so not too likely for him to pass. And uh, that unit breaks and uh, adding up the victory points, extremely close. Uh, he'd got two table quarters contested. Uh, he'd, he'd picked up two table quarters. I'd only got one. I'd killed his general though and I got two standards. So uh, with the points calculated out, the, the difference of points, points was only about 50. Uh, I got uh, 100 for his general and two for table quarters, uh, sorry, two for standards. And uh, he only got two table quarters. So I picked up, and I picked up table quarters myself. So we, when we worked it up, I won by about 260. So it was a marginal victory to the Tomb Kings, but it's a victory nonetheless. And uh, very uh, happy about this game. And one final background point to note is that um, in the last tournament I played, I got one of the worst sportsmanship scores out of anybody. And the guy that I played against, Funnily enough, in the previous tournament that was in New Zealand, he actually got one of the worst, uh, worst sportsmanship scores. So it's, it's the, it was the two of us. But despite being two of the worst sports in the company, uh, in, not in the company, on the, in the country, uh, on paper, we both had a fantastic time and you know laughter all around. And you know, we, we it was just a blast of a game. Like you had to be there. It was just a really good time. So it was really surprising given that. And uh, me and this guy get along really well. So. Uh, thanks to him for the game, and thanks to you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed another report. And uh, yeah, the, the Lizardman, my first victory against them. But uh, yeah, things went pretty well this game. 
See you guys later.